How do we talk to loved ones who question why we've left a gospelless church to go to a gospel centric one? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt. This is Talks with Dad Rod, and I'm here with Dr. Rod Rosenblatt. Dad, uh, the, the, the family can be a little bit uh, mystified about why some of us might draw a hard line and, and say, this church is just not acceptable to me, and this other one is really, has really got what I need. Um, and and the, the, the question involves loved ones, which I know adds a particular pressure. It, it like does. I imagine sitting around like the Thanksgiving table or something, right? Yep. And you're sitting there and going, okay, I got to have this conversation now, right? Because somebody just lightly says, so why did you move from one church to the other? Why did you go stop going there and go to the other one, right? Yeah. Well, in many cases, it has to do with a kind of an unresolved um anxiety or something as to which church to attend. And we are pretty simple to understand. We make no attempt to be as encyclopedic um, as either the classical Roman or the historically reformed. They tend to want to answer all questions equally. And we tend to have a hierarchy and never get to some of the detailed questions they want. Our Book of Concord puts the ones out that we had to fight in the formula and the epitome, but we aren't going for looking for a, an encyclopedia of the universe. <clears throat> People will many times come to our churches because of the preaching of the gospel every single Sunday to whoever's there. Um, we don't don't operate with the classical reformed great as if everybody's elect. We don't we aren't in that. Um, we will at our best be using different biblical texts every Sunday, but preaching that same gospel of Christ crucified, Old Testament or New Testament texts. That the center of it all is going to be there, ought to be every single Sunday and center stage. Uh, a curriculum, too. It ought to be evident in our curriculum that we're using in a parish that everything is pointing toward Christ dying and rising again for us, individually, for us. And uh, there are many people who cannot put up with the lack of any kind of sacraments, just an altar call at the end. That's not what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about actually preaching to sinners, even though they already are believers, preaching to sinners what Christ did for us. So isn't, so I, and we, we we're, I know we've covered this, I think we're coming at this same subject from different angles now that I'm thinking about it. Is it a, it is, it is somewhat oversimplified, but solid to say the, the, the reason the church, the purpose of the church is for the delivery of that. Yes. That's why the church is there. Yeah, you don't need any more than the Great Commission to know that. I mean, you can find it in other spots in Scripture, of course, but just the Great Commission tells us what the church is for. If you'd like it a little broader, Acts 2.42 maybe, one verse of what the earliest church did. Uh, but but the it, command, the yeah. command to do the thing. You do this. Yeah, do this. And in the early days, it got him killed. But yes, those were the orders. Go preach the gospel to every living creature. Which uh, includes uh, believing sinners. Yes. By the way, if you go to church and uh, you've come, you know, well... Um, the Christ, uh, that Christ has, has brought you to him. I can't say you've come to Christ because you're dead in your sin. That uh, Jesus lifted you to him like the bones in the desert. Um, if, if you've been brought to him, then um, that isn't to say that you actually stopped sinning, uh, even if you have the new man in you, right? You're right. Going, you're going, the, 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 unfortunately, as St. Paul says, we've got the two natures and they war against each other. Yep, and uh, the end of Romans 7. This, this flesh that I am in, Yep. Uh, continues, as he states about himself, to war against yep. the, the new man that was created in him, and it's very frustrating. Uh, he says, I hate this, you know. Yep. Um, and I do what I don't want to do. I continually don't do what I want to do, wretched man that I am. And the thing that I hate is what I continue to do. Yep. 
and this is, you know, we're talking, we all, I think, can, can say, and I've been taught, is uh, we can easily say faithfully that we are chief of sinners. I am chief of sinners, just yep. like St. Paul is chief of sinners. Yep. Um, but the good news is to come to not just the unbelievers that they might believe, but it is to come to the believers who struggle in their faith. Uh, and I always fall back to, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, yep. is the call from my perspective for hearing the gospel as a faithful believer. Uh, because I always struggle in my faith. Yep, and every believer does. Whether they, we admit it or not, we do. So the gospel continues and is forever to be good news yep. to the Til- world, not to a, a particular set to, pr- to produce a particular result. Yep. This is, this is truly the feeding of the sheep. Yep. Literally. Yep. Uh, I think that's a fair statement of it. And honest, honest to Scripture. So the good news is simple, and it can be trusted. The, the, uh, the death and resurrection is an actual historic occurrence, yep. and you can trust this. This is, wor- this is trustworthy. Yeah, if you're doubting the whole thing, you need to read some good Christian apologetics. And if you like hearing it, again, I recommend Dr. Montgomery's audio series, Sensible Christianity, and we've got it for sale. That is a fabulous beginning for laity fabulous beginning to the whole question of is it true it's one of our favorite subjects here okay we got to wrap it up hope you guys have enjoyed this hope uh that you've gotten something from this and that this has been edifying for you please come by and visit us and get more at 1517.org and uh we uh, you can also visit for some of these things the the 1517.org store the shop that we have there uh, including downloadable materials And uh, find us on Facebook. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more. And please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.